for today from Seeds of Happiness. And we are chapter five. And today's story is uh, number six, page 122. Even someone who is not good at talking can make conversations go smoothly just by nodding as he or she listens. I often hear complaints of this kind. My conversations don't seem to go anywhere. Or, I try to say something, but then I get stuck for words and lose the thread of what I wanted to say. There are lots of people who are troubled by the fact that they can't easily start conversations with others at the workplace or when having a drink somewhere and are thus unable to form connections with others. I wish I could talk to people in a relaxed, easy way, they think. And a fair number may decide to learn techniques for stimulating good conversation. So how can one become good at making conversation? There is an old saying, good talkers are good listeners. Good conversationalists are not fluent speakers or those with fine voices. They're not skilled performers. They are people who know how to listen skillfully to what others are saying. For example, we all know people who are very talkative, who are never at a loss for things to say, and yet who make everyone else feel awkward and uncomfortable when they join in a conversation. People like that may be good talkers, but since they don't want to hear what others are trying to say, they monopolize and ruin the conversation. On the other hand, there are people who are not very comfortable talking and yet are quite well liked. Other people tend to seek them out for conversation or invite them to dinner. These tend to be people who are good listeners. People will say, when I talk to him, he listens very intently, or talking with her makes me feel peaceful and calm. Such people are good listeners, even if they're not good at talking from their side. So then how can we become good listeners? There are various techniques, but the simplest way is to nod from time to time as one listens to the other person. Nodding is a simple movement of the head up and down, but doing it or not makes a big difference. This has been proved in psychological experiments. A psychologist named Matarazzo tested the effects of nodding in conversation in the following way. He observed how the frequency of a person's utterances during a job interview increased or decreased depending on whether the interviewer nodded frequently or infrequently as he listened to the interviewee speak. Each interview lasted for 45 minutes and for the first 15 minutes, the interviewer reacted in a less active, ordinary way. For the next 15 minutes, he nodded frequently and clearly and for the last 15 minutes, he went back to a less active, more ordinary way of reacting. When he tabulated the results, he found that the number of utterances by the interviewee increased by 50% when the interviewer nodded frequently during a given 15-minute segment, as compared with one in which he did not nod much. That means that the interviewee spoke twice as much when he was nodded at during the first and last segment as compared with the middle segment. The conversation was twice as lively as a result. Why was there such a difference? Because the speaker was looking for some reaction from the listener to what he was saying. Nodding tells the speaker I am listening carefully to what you are saying. When the listener nods, the speaker feels relaxed, knowing that he is being heard, and the conversation goes well. On the other hand, if the listener shows no such reaction, the speaker will think, he's not interested, or maybe he doesn't like me. 
This kind of anxiety will make him end the conversation as soon as he can. People who are good listeners are also good at nodding. It's not a matter of just moving your head in a mechanical fashion. If you realize that a particular point is important to the speaker, you nod emphatically. If the speaker is recalling something that was painful to him or her, you nod with a sympathetic look. If you sense that a nod will not be enough, you should make a short comment like, is that what happened there? Or that must have been hard on you. Just doing these things will help the conversation move along naturally. You don't have to force yourself to come up with various topics. When a conversation seems stuck, it is usually not because of the topic, but because the parties don't know how to respond properly to each other's remarks. Even if you don't much enjoy talking, if you work at listening carefully to what the other person says, anyone can become a skilled conversationalist. Okay, so this is today's uh, story, which I think is very important. Um, as the story said, we all have a, maybe a few acquaintances around us who, when we are together with them, they do all the talking and they monopolize the meeting or conversation. And as a result, we or other people don't get a chance to speak. And uh, it doesn't make other people feel good. So if we want to become a good speaker, we need to first listen to people to know what is important to them. What, where do they come from? Um, if you don't understand what's going on in their mind, then we cannot have deep topics uh, that we can enjoy talking about. Yeah, so listening becomes very important, which I think because in Buddhism in general, listening to the Dharma is of utmost importance. Uh, many people who uh, study Buddhism intently, they become very good listeners and good conversationalists. Also, we, one of our daily practices is cultivating compassion, which means first we hear what people are saying, and then we avoid or try to refrain from judging them. Even if you know, the ego gets active, we try to make effort and not judge them and show empathy instead. Why do they feel the way they do? Why is this so hard for them? Or why do they have this problem in the first place? We are trying to understand just like a scientist observes and collects data and experiments, trying to understand what's the cause and effect relationship. And it, it's not just benefiting the other person, it benefits us too, because the more we think about the cause and effect relationship, the closer we are uh, moving towards the happiness that holds us fast, never to abandon us. Yeah, that's the beauty of this spiritual journey. I'm very happy to go forward with all of you here. Uh, today is the second day of our online convention to celebrate the life of Master Shinran, the founder of Pure Land Shin Buddhism in Japan. So it's a live event. So it's going to start uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time today, Saturday. So as a result, we don't have the afternoon recitation meditation through Skype. It's not here. It will be through Zoom. It's by invitation only. So if you don't have the Zoom link, just ask me and I'll be happy to share with you if you're part of the Sangha. So have a beautiful Saturday, everyone. And also we have a Happiness Lab at 10 a.m. hosted by UET. Okay, bye-bye.